Today, we'll continue talking about the incompressible flow over finite wings. Going to general lift distributions. And vortex lattice methods. Okay, so last time and uh, in our review, we basically just considered the special case of the elliptical lift distribution. But now what we're going to do is take lifting line theory further to be able to apply it to any uh, generic lift distribution. So if we have coordinate system, that's why Z, uh, where our lifting line goes here along our y axis here comes the infinity then if we let y of minus v over two for theta uh, remember b is the wingspan uh, then what we get is that since y varies between negative v over 2 and v over 2 over the wing, that corresponds to theta varying between 0 and pi. Now, if you rewrite the elliptical wing distribute, a lift distribution with that transformation, what we get for the circulation is uh, gamma of theta is some maximum strength gamma naught sine theta. So what this suggests is that a Fourier series, specifically a Fourier sine series, is something that we might be able to use to build up an arbitrary lift distribution. So that might look like something like this, gamma of theta to be infinity the sum over some n terms of a Fourier sine series. And we can choose this n for any desired level of accuracy. Obviously, n equals 1 is approximating things using the elliptical lift distribution, and going above that starts giving us an approximation for non-elliptical distributions. Now, because this is a Fourier series, and so it's linear, each of these coefficients, a n, has to satisfy Uh, the fundamental equation of lifting line theory, which I'll abbreviate F E L L T. And that's the big integral differential equation that we saw in the last lecture. Now if we differentiate with respect to y and substitute this expression into uh, the fundamental equation of lifting line theory, and then evaluate the uh, integral term, what we get is this that the angle of attack at theta naught is 2b over i chord of theta naught in general, which may vary along the line. Now some plus alpha l equals 0 of theta naught plus another sum N A N sine N theta naught over N theta naught. Now this is 
if it's evaluated at some location y, uh, then the specific value theta naught using the this transformation is known. Um, and generally, uh, the, the wingspan b will be known. The chord uh, as a function of theta naught, so just the geometry of the wing c of theta naught is known. And also from the 2D airfoil sections, alpha L equals zero of theta naught are known. So the unknowns in uh, this equation are, are the n uh, coefficients a sub n. So the trick is to choose n spanwise locations. So basically evaluate at n locations along the wingspan, then we get an n by n linear system of equations. Uh, for the a sub n coefficients. Usually this would be solved numerically because for reasonable accuracy uh, this is this will be a large system, but there's no reason for uh, two or three coefficients uh, if you thought that was going to be a, a reasonable enough approximation of the lift distribution that you may indeed go ahead and uh, solve this analytically. Um, and once you have the system of equations solved, so you've got the a sub n, you can then get the circulation distribution. So once you have that, then you can get the lift coefficient, which is just q over s, and grow from over to p over 2 to b over 2 of a circulation distribution. And if we write that in terms of the coefficients, then we have an integral inside the summation. Sine theta, d theta. But looking a little more carefully at this integral, the integral from 0 to pi of sine n theta, sine theta, d theta, only has two possible values pi over 2 for n equals 1, and 0 for all other values of n. So this simplifies dramatically. And what we're left with is that Cl is a1 pi b squared over s. And b squared over s is just the aspect ratio, so Cl, is A1 pi AR for general lift distribution. Now, this might look very attractive because only the first coefficient A1 is involved here. However, this is a member that all the A sub n's had to be determined as part of a system, an n by n system of linear equations. So you have to actually solve for all the ANs just to determine this A1. So it's perhaps actually less trivial than it seems in this case. Nevertheless, we get this nice compact expression for the lift. Now for the induced drag, CDI, that's going to be 2 over V infinity S. And go from negative p over 2 to p over 2, gamma of y times the induced angle of attack. And again, if we write that in terms of our Fourier coefficients, we get summation over the n.
And without going into the details, you can look it up in the textbook if, uh, if, you, if you want to delve into the, the depths of the math. Um, but we can show that the induced angle of attack, which shows up in this equation, can be written also in terms of the Fourier coefficients. And so after further manipulation, um, again without going through the details, the final expression we get for the drag coefficient, or the induced drag coefficient, is that it's CL squared over pi AR, which is what we had for the elliptical lift distribution, times a factor 1 plus delta. And more commonly, you'll see this written as CL squared over pi E. A R so the E is one over one plus delta. So the these expressions are exactly equivalent. So what does this delta and E really mean? Well one thing we can say is that delta is greater than or equal to zero, and thus E is less than or equal to one. And this E is called the span efficiency factor. And it tells us essentially how close a given wing is to approximating the elliptical lift distribution. And that's because for elliptical, we get delta equals zero and E equals one. So we see that the induced drag for a given lift coefficient and given uh, aspect ratio is the lowest within elliptical lift distribution. So the elliptical is the best possible result. And this was stated before, but wasn't sort of shown to be true, and now we, we, we see why indeed that's the case. And this delta factor, which was just introduced here, is just another function of the Fourier coefficients, the 2 to n of n, a n over a 1 squared. So again, if you actually have all the Fourier co coefficients, you can calculate all these things um, and directly come up with uh, the span efficiency factor or this delta factor um, to based on however many um, coefficients and therefore points you choose to evaluate the lift uh, distribution of at, so this number n. So now that we have these results, next we'll explore the manner in which they inform wing design.